All right, everybody, welcome back to Garage Story. So it's a beautiful spring day. Let's do something a little different. So I've got a fire going back here again, because we're still trying to burn up a lot of stuff back here. So let's do something fun here. Let's see if we can find a mower that we can fix and get ready to sell within maybe a couple hours, because I'm gonna have to be outside monitoring this fire for a long time. We'll see how the two hour part goes. But anyway, let's see if we can find a mower somewhere out here that we think we can fix up and sell. All together we have maybe, I don't know, maybe 60 mowers out in this area. No, probably more like 70. So these here are a little bit older than the ones over there. I've had them sitting here a little bit longer. So this is probably not the right area. Uh, those two could be candidates, or that one. But they look boring, so let's get something different. No, 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 no. Maybe this one. So this one I picked up a year and a half ago, and they just said that it stopped running well. I picked this one up for free. I like how it's still pretty bright. The paint looks pretty good. It looks fairly nice overall. The seat is starting to separate. That tire is good. That tire is flat. I think the back tires might be good. I think running this mower would be worth maybe uh, peak season, maybe 700 bucks. Uh, I'd probably ask 800 and try to get at least six. What do I know about this mower? Just what the guy told me that it stopped running well. I have not really done anything to this that I remember. I don't even know if the engine is free anymore. We've got a Briggs 22. Oh yeah, it feels fine. Let's see if we can get this thing dragged out of here. Backo time. So what do we have here? This is a Husqvarna YTH22V46. These decks tend to break on that bracket right here. And yeah, this one has been broken and repaired. And if it's holding, I'm not gonna try to fix it again. If it's holding, it's holding. I really am kind of partial to this type of mower because my dad had one for a long time and we beat the snot out of it and it did a really good job broke that same bracket it was re-welded really it worked fine after that ours had the uh, Kohler instead of the Briggs and it's actually sitting right over there what's left of it I may as well work it out here since I want to be able to keep an eye on the fire we are going to see if we can get it to crank over seems like a logical place to start let's do it all right so we've got most of the usual tools here a battery air compressor actual tools let's go ahead and start by checking the oil So uh, the oil smells like gasoline to me. That's not a good sign. Where's the oil drain on here? Oh, there's the drain. Okay, yeah. Right behind this shroud. So that's a nice way to make things messy, but I'm not gonna do anything about that yet. First things first, I wanna see if we can get this thing to crank. I'll wire brush these off real quick and throw a battery in here. And that battery is a good battery that I bought just a few weeks ago and I've charged it up. So should be good to go. Okay, so we have a key in here. It's a good sign. Brake pedal is depressed. You think it'll crank over? Well, first let's get the key, see if the hour meter turns on. We get nothing. 100% nothing. Next question is, is there a fuse that's blown? Or some such thing. So I'm gonna try to arc the solenoid. Okay, so starter works fine, but no power is getting to the run circuit. Sure sounds like a bad fuse, possibly. I could have a bad ignition switch. Fuse is probably the easiest thing to check, so we should probably do that first. Try to be real gentle, I don't wanna break it. Yeah, let's look at the fuse. You can see it pretty well on this side. That fuse looks perfectly fine to me. So we know we have power, but it's not getting where it needs to go. So this is probably gonna be a case for the voltmeter. I wanna make sure power is getting here when the key is on. Judging by the fact that the hour meter is not coming on at all, 
It really makes me think that the ignition switch might be the issue. The safeties would not affect the hour meter. So that's probably what I'm going to do next is try to get this out of here and um, try to swap it out with another one because I'm sure we could find one somewhere. All right, so it's a different day now. It's dark outside, so I rolled the mower into the shop so I could see what I was doing. I'm very thankful I do have at least some sort of a covered space with lights. Believe me, I know what it's like to work without those. Let's see if we can keep moving forward on here. So we know that it will crank over when we arc the solenoids, but there doesn't seem to be much um, effort to start running. So I think I might start by trying to get some oil out so I can crank the engine without worrying about damaging anything with too much oil in there. So I might just bleed out some oil to get the levels down better, not actually change it yet. Then I'll probably move forward to like compression and spark tests to see what's going on here. I think it might be a bad ignition switch here. So I may just see if I have one that I can swap in there. I may have one over here. I may actually do that first. I'm not really sure. So. You get to follow along and see what I do. Let's see if the uh, hour meter comes on. Hour meter does not come on, so we're still getting nothing. So that implies to me that it's not a bad ignition. We have something else electrical to look for. Fun times ahead. All right, so I started figuring some of this out a little bit, I think. Here's what I've found. If I have my probe in this white wire coming to the solenoid and I ground out the other one, turn the key to run, I am getting power, or not to run, but to start, I'm getting power. So the solenoid, in theory, should be getting the power it needs. Obviously, there's still stuff going on. The hour meter does not come on, which is funky. So I pulled out this plug from the hour meter, tried to check both sides of it to see if I could get any power, and I could not. And in doing so, pulling this wire around, I saw back here, way back in there, there's a couple of loose wires. Let me see if I can get my hand back here. No wonder the hour meter doesn't work. The wires are, the wires are um, chewed through. It really does affect things if you have wires cut, depending on which wires they are. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pop this gas tank out of here, see if I can get a little more room to work, and we'll see what we can accomplish. The gas tank out that wasn't too hard just had to force it past here a little bit so here's what we have going on in here these are the two wires we already saw were broken and the third wire is most of the way broken too and here is one of those ends i'm gonna see if i can rejoin those wires and see what difference that makes nothing that was a little disappointing i was really hoping that would do something do we have a bad hour meter or something? Don't you love electrical problems? Kind of seems like it might be a bad grounding issue. It's kind of what I was thinking before I actually finished the splice. And let me show you what I just found down here. I just happened to notice this. I don't know if you know what that is, or if you can even see with the sliding. But that is a ground that does not have the wire attached. And if you look down here, you'll notice amongst this debris is a wire. So here we have a ground, here we have a piece of wire. I'm thinking that's our real issue. I'm thinking if we get that fixed, I think that this thing will crank over. The wire is right here on the sheath. I pulled the sheath back a little bit, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a wire right there. So technically, I just plug the hour meter in, and if I rub that wire on that bolt, um, the hour meter might come on if the key is in on position. So let me see if I can rub this wire on this bolt. Oh yeah, loud and clear, 230 something hours on here. All right, so now I know coming back that that is most likely what the issue is. If I have enough hands, let's see if I can get it to crank. Yes, all right. That's super exciting, now we've found something. I've probably spent, today I've probably spent an hour, 20, hour and a half. I probably spent 30 minutes on it the other day trying to get stuff sorted out. So we're probably already at about our two hours, but when you get bits and pieces, it makes it harder. I think we're making some good headway now. Woohoo! At this point, it should crank over and it may even run if we have gas in it. So really, this mower was 
this far away from the moment of truth where we see if it actually runs okay and I ran out of time. Let's go ahead and uh, get some gas in the gas tank, put the ignition switch back in, which I think I took out to test something else, but that takes hardly any time to put that back in. Let's see if this thing will run. If it runs, then we'll see if it drives. If it drives, you know, then we'll see if the deck works. This may really not need much. Let's see. So first thing is uh, throwing the ignition switch in here. So let's um, set this gas tank back in here. If we can get it in there. See if she cranks. Woohoo! It actually fired up, so there's some residual fuel in there. So that's good. I'm not sure if the solenoid's clicking. I'm not feeling it either, so pretty sure that's gonna have to come out and uh, be cleaned up. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Check this thing out. Let's see if this thing will cycle. This one should not need to be grounded since it has two wires going to it, but in case anyone's concerned, I'll go ahead and ground it out here. Yeah, it's not it's not cycling. It doesn't feel too stuck, so I can kind of work it with my hands. Oh, uh, it's actually working now. There we go. I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and throw this back in, add some fuel to this thing, and see if it'll run. Okay, so I think we've got some gas in the oil in here, so I'm going to drain off some so we aren't over full at least. I'm not gonna change the oil yet um, until we see if it runs or not, but let me show you what the oil's looking like. We are up right about here, and full is down here. And it does not feel as tacky as normal oil, so. There we go. Oh yeah, that is super runny. All right, since I have high hopes that this will run pretty well, let's go ahead and put the muffler shield back on there and bolt the gas tank in and change out this. Then we'll do the run test. Obviously, I know I may need to take the carburetor off if my float's not working well and allowing gas to flood down into the engine, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that just yet. Okay, so got it together. I'm glad I put this heat shield back on because I kind of forgot those bolts go into the muffler on the underside so they kind of hold the muffler up in place. So it's good to have those on. Let's see if she runs. What do you think? Do you think it'll run? It could be that it was parked because of electrical issues or those could have happened after it was parked. Something chewed it up. Let's see. All right, here it goes. And remember, it may need to crank a little while to get fuel in the carburetor since we just drained the carburetor bolt, essentially. Full choke. Hey, it kind of sort of started. Let's go again. Okay, we've established that it does run. Yeah, I think something's burning off of there. I don't think that's internal issues on the engine. I do want to check out the um, transmission real quick. So I'm going to fire it up again and just um, push it forward, backwards. Oh, that reminds me, I need to engage the transmission before I do that. So let's do that in just a second when the smoke clears and then uh, change the oil.
That's a cloud of smoke. Well, the transmission didn't work very well there. I don't know what's going on there. Seems like it had to um, re-engage a little bit. It's possible the transmission was just having trouble engaging again there because at first it did nothing. The more I used it, the more it seemed to get better. It could be something that was just kind of stuck inside there and it's freeing up. Man, that thing smokes a lot, but the way it's still smoking makes me think that it's not an internal problem with the engine. I think it's worth changing the oil and uh, seeing if we can take this thing out and cut with cut grass with it. All right, guys, so a new day here. I didn't actually get to run test it the other day. I was letting the gas drain out of the oil filter and I ran out of time and I installed a cutoff valve here so that I wouldn't have to worry as much about the engine flooding with fuel which doesn't fix any issue with the carburetor and actually i kind of wish now that i hadn't done that because since i let it sit for a little while i would have been able to see if fuel was indeed coming through the carburetor but i didn't know i was gonna let it sit and uh it turns out the shutoff valve still has a little dribble to it and uh, we've got fuel in the filter here i did pull the dipstick and i think there may be just a tad in there but let's uh open this up and see if there's anything else in here and i'm not putting a pan there because hopefully it's not that much but, you know, could be exciting here if there's a lot. It is not a lot. Oil filter feels good. So I think all the gasoline's out of the oil filter. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some oil in and uh, we'll do our test run. Let's check the air filter, which I just unscrewed. Oh, hey, that's... Typical dirty, not too bad. I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna need to pull this carburetor and uh, clean the float valve. I don't wanna get gas down the engine now that I just changed the oil out. We are ready for seeing if this thing will um, run and drive and cut and mow. So we already know it runs. Um, the transmission seemed like it was having some quirks and this thing was smoking a lot. So we'll probably fire it up, try to get it outside pretty quick and then um, probably run around and maybe get some mowing done. Well, I think this mower runs really good now. It's not smoking anymore, so I think it was just residual stuff. Maybe from even having the oil overflowed with gas in there. I do think this mower could use probably a carb clean of some sort to try to fix the float in there or whatever. So just so it's not flooding in there anymore. I do have the shutoff valve on there, like I mentioned before though. Seems like the shutoff valve still lets it drip by. So it's not really a solution there. Really, the only other issue is, I think my idler pulley for the clutch system is hanging up a little bit. So that sometimes I have to stomp and release the clutch pedal, clutch brake, in order to get the transmission to engage well. But it seems like the transmission actually works really well and pretty strong. It's just a really nice mower for what it is. If you need a mower and you can't afford a zero turn, I definitely would recommend looking at a mower like this, a Husqvarna with the foot operated hydrostatic transmission. The 46 inch decks have certain areas that they break. If you have the means to re-weld one, if it's broken or if it breaks, then uh, I wouldn't be afraid of the of the 46 inch deck. It leaves a pretty good cut. I mean, these things will run several hundred hours. I just really like them, of course. <laughs> I'm partial because I kind of grew up on one of these. I think we were pretty successful. We actually didn't put that much time into this mower and it's running and mowing and starting and stopping. Just a few few more minutes of work, it would probably be ready to sell. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe. That helps the channel. Like the video, leave a comment, whatever. But guys, as always, stay safe, keep making stories. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Thumbnail. Can't breathe it.